Guys, whenever I see a title like this, example, uh, that's why we haven't met any aliens yet. Um, it always immediately kind of brings me back to like wanting to speak about Fermi, right? Specifically Enrico Fermi, uh, Oppenheimer, you know, Nobel Peace Prize phys physicist guys. Like this was the man, okay? And he basically made this this paradox, let's say, like super intriguing to actually encounter it. And this is something incredibly exciting. Right. I back a couple of theories kind of within uh, the Fermi uh, paradox. I do, without a doubt here. Um, we could be the only ones. Like Earth in itself and kind of what we are what we, is just incredibly unique within the billions of stars. That could be a reason why um, we've never encountered any type of alien life, specifically alien life that looks uh, and kind of moves similar to us bipeds. You get what I mean here? Um, that could be something. All right, the rare earth hypothesis, uh, the zoo hypothesis specifically also, um, or they destroyed themselves similar to how we're going to end up doing to ourselves anyway, right? Because yeah, we don't like each other. Like we're all on the same earth instead of, instead of actually fighting to basically, uh, you know, have the ability to, to kind of you know, get into like some type of light drive, um, you know, FTL drive type of thing, so we can actually travel long distances uh, or invest money into basically, um, you know, creating the ability to, let's say, fold space. And what I mean, what I mean by folding space is this. So for example, this distance and this distance is really far. Okay. Technically. But what if we have the ability to basically fold space and just do this here, right? And now these two distances are, are nothing now. They're, they're there, right? Basically, folding space and time um, sounds like a lot of uh, gravitational uh, things that are going to need to happen during that process. But I definitely back the concept of figuring out what's actually past our exosphere. I understand the human body specifically is not meant for like long space travel. I get that. We need to figure something out with that too. Or make robots, Okay, self-replicating robots, similar to the show Stargate, but but we have more control over them. Over them. But either way, let's go ahead and jump to this video immediately. Coming from the channel, simply space uh, suggestion via Discord. Let's jump into it. Sorry for being so long-winded, guys. We're talking about space and science. Extraterrestrial life refers to life forms that did not originate and are not indigenous to our planet. So this term covers all possible types of life outside the Earth. These can be viruses, but also plant-like life forms. Some go even further. They are looking for creatures that are very similar to humans in their complexity, or even surpass them, popularly known as aliens. But if there is extraterrestrial life, why hasn't anyone heard about it until now? Do so-called aliens even exist? The Fermi Paradox addresses this very question. What approaches there are to this, you can find out here. Let's do it. The Fermi Paradox represents a thought of the physicist Enrico Fermi from 1950. Fermi assumed that there is extraterrestrial life, or extraterrestrial intelligence. This extraterrestrial intelligence should make it possible for technically advanced colonizations to survive for several million years, and during this time, it should be possible to colonize complete galaxies by means of intergalactic and interstellar space travel. Yeah, they didn't Fermi destroy went themselves. Even further. He assumed that this had already happened. Nevertheless, the search for extraterrestrials has been unsuccessful so far. Yeah, guys, I back that theory also. I do. I absolutely back that that theory. I think if that, I think if an alien, let's say, right, was to come to the planet Earth, it's most likely some variant of us. Um, like a species specifically that evolved on Earth, left uh, technologically was was you know a, a, was amazing. Let's say uh, they left and they're coming back to basically check on us again. Zoo hypothesis, right? So like everything kind of works together here, which was paradoxical for the scientist. It is. Therefore, he questioned his observations and assumptions, which led to the Fermi paradox. Since the universe is already very old and has many stars. There should be life beyond the Earth, should unless be. the origin of life on our Earth is an unusual process. This is also called the Rare Earth Hypothesis. It is assumed that the Earth does not have a unique position in our solar system, and that there are other technical civilizations in our galaxy. Although the galaxy has a width of about 100,000 light years, a sublight <laughs> drive would need up to 10 million years for such a distance, so that one can conclude that the age of the galaxy is about 10 billion years. 
If there is a civilization in the Milky Way that is capable of interstellar colonization, then the whole galaxy could be completely colonized. And that only in a few million years. But the Milky Way is much older than the at least 20 years that would be necessary for it. Therefore, extraterrestrial life should exist somewhere in the neighborhood of the Earth. But up to today, no proof for extraterrestrial life could be found. So, the paradox in a nutshell, if extraterrestrials do exist, why aren't they here? The Drake Equation The Drake mm, Equation is closely okay. related to the Fermi Paradox. So far, most of the parameters of this equation are still unknown, so it cannot help much in solving the paradox. The Drake Equation only refers to the Milky Way, our galaxy. The Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy, according to whose type about two-thirds of the galaxies existing in the universe are constructed. Since the universe, as observed today, has about up to 100 billion similar galaxies to the Milky Way, the is, is that Hubble? Observed today has about up to 100 billion similar galaxies to the Milky Way. The yeah, yeah, guys, the image definitely looks more Hubble than JWST. Final value resulting from the Drake equation would have to be multiplied by a relative factor for the whole universe. I'm not disrespecting Although the Although this Hubble. increases the total number of possible civilizations enormously, this calculation remains very imprecise due to the insufficient knowledge of other galaxies. Furthermore, the Drake equation refers not only to the theoretical number of civilizations, but also to the possibility of establishing contact with them. The closest galaxy is the Andromeda Nebula, which is 2.5 million light years away. So this galaxy is already out of consideration for practical contact, and consequently, all others as well. Hypothesis, we are really alone. One thesis says that multicellular life in space is very rare, since even Earth-like planets are rare. Since many improbable coincidences met each other. I mean, are they rare? Like, we know of a, a good amount of them, let's say. Um, referring to planets that are kind of within the, uh, the habitable zone of their, their, their parent star. Uh, the, within the Goldilocks zone, basically, right? We, we know of a couple of them. Um, but I guess out of the, the sheer number of little dots in the sky, let's say, uh, then I guess they are incredibly rare by, by default. But the fact that we know of a couple of them... ...so that life on Earth could develop, the existence of other Earth-like planets is also improbable. These coincidences -like include planet. the existence of the Moon and the position of the Earth in the solar system, which ensures a life-friendly temperature for the Earth. In this explanation attempt, the parameters of the so-called Drake equation are chosen in such a way that in the galaxy in which we find ourselves, only our civilization exists. Thus, the Fermi paradox no longer becomes paradoxical because one of the basic assumptions is negated. This hypothesis is convincing for many scientists. It is. However, there are scientists... I get... Listen, listen, I'm sorry. I'm a dreamer. All right? I'm one of those. Like, I understand the Drake, uh, the Drake equation. I get that... It, Based off the numbers, it just doesn't make any sense, right? But like, no, I want a dream, bro. ...who believe Earth-like planets do exist. Especially the fact that more and more exoplanets are being discovered supports this assumption. Impossibility of interstellar colonization. Impossibility? The prerequisite for the Fermi Paradox is a civilization capable of colonizing interstellar. However, this cannot be fulfilled on principle. Because with this precondition, it would be possible that there would be some technical civilizations, but they could not influence each other because the spatial distance would be too far. Here is an example. The distance of the Sun to the star Proxima Centauri, the nearest star, can only be reached after several years, even if the speed of light is included here. Right. According to current knowledge, however, the speed of light cannot be exceeded, which leads to several questions. For one thing, the question arises whether a civilization could still reach foreign star systems. What about the speed of dark? No, I don't want to get into that. For one thing, the question arises whether a civilization could still reach foreign star systems, and if this would be advantageous for this civilization. On the other hand, there is the question of what time offset in oral exchange among populations from different star systems would be acceptable in order for a civilization to have the necessary cohesion. According to Stephen Hawking, the origin of life outside the Earth is probable. He also believes that human-like intelligence is possible. However, he assumes that this intelligence will eventually reach a limit and become unstable so that these organisms will unintentionally extinguish themselves. 
This could be triggered, for example, by genetically manipulated viruses, nuclear wars, or a greenhouse effect that can no longer be controlled. Berserker Theory and Dark Forest Theory The Berserker Theory, named after Fred Saberhagen's Berserker Saga, Get ready for this. assumes that aliens send artificial probes into space that destroy other civilizations. In doing so, they deliberately destroy other life so that potential enemies are eliminated early on, allowing the aliens to spread out into space undisturbed. There are different opinions concerning the way of extermination. The Dark Forest Theory, named after Lu Cixin's trilogy The Dark Forest, aims in a thematically similar direction. According to this theory, extraterrestrial life does exist, but these civilizations camouflage themselves and behave inconspicuously so that no potential enemies will notice them. This is intended to reduce the risk of predation, similar to camouflage in biology. According to this, the universe is a so-called dark forest, which is home to all kinds of predators that compete for the best camouflage. Astrophysical Explanation yeah, guys, I don't like the I don't, I don't like it. I never liked the theory of it. I mean, don't get me wrong here. I think bits and pieces of uh, the dark forest theory are functional, right? They, they, they feel functional, but I, I just don't like it. Gamma ray <laughs> it bursts it, are it now feel considered good the most energetic phenomena in the universe. This is because gamma ray bursts can cause mass deaths in planets that are located within their cones of radiation, even light years away. Thus, higher life could also have been extinguished by them. In galaxies, evolution to complex life forms is said to have been impossible in the first 5 billion years of the beginning of the universe because of intense gamma ray activity. The Mathematical A Priori Argument The astrophysicist J. Richard Gott does not consider the thesis that galaxies are colonized to be tenable because he believes that all life would then be part of such a super civilization. Because if civilizations existed, then according to the astrophysicist, it would be unlikely that we were formed on the comparatively young and small Earth, which at that time had not even been colonized. Okay, I've never heard this theory. The Great Filter Concept The concept of the Great Filter combines some of the above arguments. This concept says that there is a kind of filter that is necessary to reach a level of civilization. This filter would present a hurdle or challenge that would make it very difficult to reach that level. It is possible that the higher intelligence is very rare in evolution. With this assumption, we humans would be the only life form that has overcome the Great Filter so far. Okay. A second possibility says that with the spread of civilizations, developments are automatically connected, which generally lead to the fact that this civilization will be extinguished at some point. Lots with this given. possibility, other civilizations would have failed to overcome the filter and mankind would have to overcome it first. Natural philosophical approaches to the existence of... I mean, that's very, like, humanistic, though, guys. I mean, I hear you. Um, I don't like this, this great filter theory, neither. Sorry. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure it's uh, very flushed out, let's say. I probably should do a little bit more research on this one here because it's intriguing, absolutely. Uh, but again, guys, we have so... There are too many stars, guys. All right, there, there are too many planets. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, it can't just be just us. Extraterrestrials can be found in antiquity. Already in Plutarch's work, Das Mondgeschist, one can find thoughts about life Plutarch. forms that do not live on Earth. Such texts, however, have basically referred to mythology. Therefore, one cannot assume that these writings tried to develop theories about extraterrestrial life with rational arguments. Another problem in astrobiology is that there is no general definition of life. Several attempts have been made to define life, but no definition has been complete or satisfactory. Okay, I like this. From this, one could also conclude that there is no fixed division between living and not living. And even if there is life similar to that on Earth, it still has to be clarified whether this life originated on Earth and then spread in space, or whether it developed in another place independent of our Earth. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think okay. that man and our Earth are unique in the universe, and that our origin is nothing but a very improbable coincidence? Or are you science fiction fanatics who have long believed in the existence of other life forms outside the Earth? And yeah, guys, I'm definitely a science fiction fanatic. That's just the uh, period here. Uh, some of these theories I definitely have never encountered, specifically these last ones here. Um, I do think that we're probably not as unique as we 
imagine i think we're just a, a small pale blue dot guys i i, I literally am obsessed with carl sagan so uh <laughs> no no i don't think i don't think so um i i'm i'm sure that there's a lot more than what we um could could probably even imagine and also at the same time if there is no definition of life i also like that theory I like i like it a lot actually because if we just specifically attribute alien life to uh, you know, something that's going to be biped, it's going to be similar to us, move like us, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then we're just looking for ourselves, just in like a different variant. But that's all we're looking for. Guys, that's, no, no, no. I think that if something is going to be massively alien, bro, we're probably not even going to recognize it as anything. I'm telling you. We're not going to recognize it as anything that we could even imagine. Oh, what about tardigrades? Those things are weird. What are they, aliens? Are squids aliens? Oh, no, I don't like them. So, the aliens. Either way, listen, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, join the conversation. Seriously. I'll catch you guys later.